Comics and movies. Those two things are my wheelhouse, or wheelhouses. With Guardians of the Galaxy being released, sometimes it's the most obscure comic books that make amazing movies. And nowadays, bringing an obscure comic book to life, well, it happens more often than you'd think. Time Cop, Wanted, Surrogates, Red, The Losers are not the strongest examples I'm looking for. I'm in over my head again. Well, last time I was, I asked a cute female New Yorker who happens to be a comic book expert, and apparently I know a lot of them. Hey Kat, you think you could help me out with this one? Hey Mike, absolutely. I think I have a couple of gems up my sleeve. It's Comic Uno and Real School, a team up of epic proportions to bring you the top five comic book movies that you probably didn't know were actually comic book movies in this The, the Real, Real School, School Countdown. Countdown. Number five, Mystery Men. I can guess what you're thinking. We all know Mystery Men is based off a comic book. That and I wouldn't put it on this list. Well, I'll defend my choice if you can tell me on which comic book Mystery Men is based. Here's a hint. It's not actually called Mystery Men. Anybody? Nope, didn't think so. The original appearance came from Renegade Press's Bizarre Flaming Carrot. And at one point, the publication actually teamed up with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. The original Turtles, when it meant something. But this ragtag group of crappy vigilantes, when adapted to the big screen, worked for the same reasons as they did in print when they adapted to film. The collection of comedic talent in this film is a hodgepodge, just like the Mystery Men themselves, but when they come together, the team makes it work and creates what I think is a hilarious film ahead of its time. Just look at the actors involved in this. Jeffrey Rush, William H. Macy, Ben Stiller, Hank Azaria, Paul Rubens, Michael Bay... Wait, Jane Michael Bay? I said I didn't have to defend it. This is my countdown. Moving on, moving on. Number four, oh boy. And I think we all know which old boy we're talking about. Director Chanwick Park loosely based the second part of his Vengeance trilogy on the manga series that ran in the late 1990s. Ironically enough, the film was much darker and gloomier than the original source material, which is actually more of a mystery. But both are extremely well written, with intriguing twists and some of the most iconic action sequences ever put on film. I agree, it's a well-crafted film with a lot of the same elements of the source material, but still became its own film at the same time. And if this movie has proven anything, it's that you don't stab a guy who's holding a hammer. It just pisses him off more. That, and be careful who you sleep with. Ugh. Number three, A History of Violence. This is a shout out to my home nation, as not only was it shot entirely in Ontario, but it was made by one of Canada's greatest filmmakers. Created by John Wagner, best known for creating Judge Dredd, A History of Violence is a grown-up take on a theme that permeates comics and the film world. But you wouldn't expect David Cronenberg, who typically makes violent and twisted films, to base another film off a graphic novel that doesn't glorify violence. The moral of the story is that violence always has consequences. We can never escape it. And as an audience, we do witness that violence begets more violence. The graphic novel may be crudely drawn, but with an amazing cast and excellent writing, this film turned out to be one of Cronenberg's best. Number two, The Crow. Please tell me we're not talking about the sequels. I think you're wasting time just by asking that question. Alex Proyas is one of the cinematic world's most visionary auteurs, with beautiful, high-paced films like iRobot and Dark City in his resume. And then he made Knowing. Late career fumbles aside, The Crow, one of his first films, was a bang right off the bat to really get his career rolling. Originally published in 1989, The Crow, with its high-contrast black-and-white print, was a modern telling of a revenge story, and was a big part of the goth movement. The films, still to this day, have a huge cult following, partially due to the unfortunate death of Brandon Lee on set. Spawning four feature films and a television series, it seems that The Crow, much like the vengeful anti-hero, will live forever. Number one, Road to Perdition. You may have known that the 2002 film was based off the Paradox Press comic book of the same name. But did you know that comic was actually based off a manga series called Lone Wolf, which also had a film adaptation released in 2002. Written by Max Collins, a former writer of Dick Tracy, and with the photorealistic art of 
Richard Pierre Rayner, this book combines great action with a 20s gangster atmosphere. This film is one of Sam Mendes' best, and that's truly saying something, as this brilliant filmmaker is responsible for some real classics. This man is a genius at what he does, and what he does is create cinema that uses film as the purely visual medium it can be. Which is why he's a perfect director for adapting a comic book. This film has one of the most breathtaking visual sequences I've ever seen and really shows you how film can be made using the visual language. And as a result, it won an Oscar for cinematography. Agree or disagree with the list? Leave your picks for top five in the comments section below. Kat, thank you so much for your help on this one. Anytime, Mike. So until next time, school's, school's out. out.